man, this, hey everybody, this was, this was a tough card. I've been trying to, I've been trying to like write copy, you know, write, write succinctly. And, uh, you know, for the, for the short videos, trying to keep it under, I mean, it has to be under a minute, but, you know, trying to keep it at around 30, 40 seconds. And, oh man, do I think this card is too complex for that. It's a, it's a good one. Particularly, or especially my interpretation of the, the Marseille deck. Anyways, we got this figure, which I'm curious, I'm curious how accurately the, the, what I consider to be the key symbolic elements will be depicted in, in any of these variants. This is something that's very interesting in general. And, and how people, here you go, here's one. Oh yeah, okay, she's got the two cups and the star. Yeah, the the idea of, of, of someone, of specifically a woman, pouring water, pouring something, two different things, one from each jug. She's got two jugs. She's pouring them out into this body of water underneath her. There is There are eight stars above her in the Marseille. But often, you know, one star. I haven't really, I haven't really settled on an interpretation of, of the number of stars. But there's there's this element of there's this element of flow of like the way that water flows out of a cup. It's pouring out, and the way that stars pour out, they just radiate they're like this thing that is pouring out light into into the universe right and um yeah as this kind of source of an outpouring of flow and it and it's a it's a continuous it's a continuous movement it's a continuous state it's it's kind of an interesting opposite or antithesis of the tower with its immediate singular sort of discharge or impact. Um, one, one aspect of this card that I really like of the star is that it, it reminds me of the concept of like a path or a way that is, that is pretty popular in a lot of Eastern spirituality, Eastern faiths. Um, the the way of something you know a lot of a lot of martial arts forms um will be called things like the way of the fist or the way of the sword right um kendo bushido like things like that and i think and i think that in a lot of these eastern cultures they do a much better job at being able to point to and, and even that analogy is is kind of the wrong one to use, but I think they're better at drawing attention to the the flow of something, the flux, the the constant change. Even like the shape of the yin yang, I think, in in terms of you know, it's a it's a static two dimensional image. It's not a moving picture, but I think it tries to symbolize this flowing circular i'm making i'm gesticulating with my hands circularly and realizing that no one can see it but um but yeah like the the way the yin yang i think tries to capture that and i think the and i think the opposite is seeing seeing the world seeing your life as a bunch of these events a bunch of these individual events as opposed to the singular thread that just is is all of the experiences interwoven as i was kind of meditating on this today i i thought about thought about all the different ways in which in which people and and I'm speaking from personal experience to a degree and and you know my close friends and relatives the ways the ways in which people divide their lives right like the 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 things that they use to kind of count the measures of the 
of the the song of their life. Uh, I remember when I used to be a when I used to be a smoker, and I smoked. I think quite heavily would be the, the right way to describe it. Cigarettes, right? I remember. I remember at one point realizing when I was when I was quitting, when I was attempting to quit, that I had gotten really used to cigarettes having become this punctuation mark at the you know at the end of certain periods of time um and then and then quitting smoking all of a sudden instead of my day being these like 20 25 pe roughly equally divided periods of time in between smokes now it was just this singular span of time and i found it to be kind of strange kind of cool kind of weird um with with social media with you know with posting online um i feel like in a way this is this is really popularized what i think for a while was missing from a lot of people's lives and by missing i don't mean like it it's necessarily a, a loss that it that it wasn't there but i feel like there was a period of time when when like journaling and and writing wasn't culturally that big of a thing i mean historically you know there's been so many different periods involving writing about yourself and your own life there was certainly a very long period of time you know before writing existed that obviously radically different literacy rates throughout different epochs of you know human history but but yeah i feel like I feel like journaling in a way has sort of come back with social media posting. It's obviously not the same. It's it's not as much of a literary exercise of self-reflection. But it is but it is some type of activity that reflects upon oneself and makes makes a person you know scrutinize and and choose what best is a representation of, you know, whatever they're trying to put out there um with the added element of then being essentially voted on for for popularity which i mean that adds a whole other thing but um but yeah the that that same kind of that same kind of dividing your day up into meaningful events self self reflective events obviously also happens um over over longer periods of time people often not only you know will will easily describe their life or at least their recent life as a series of profound events that that they you know describe their life with um as opposed to let's say you know like the star would be a singular <laughs> It's like your whole life is just you're just heading towards the singular point right it's just the one path you're on the path that's it as opposed to here's all the different things i oh i traveled i went here and i work at this company and i do it's like a list of all these atomized pieces but yeah not only are people i feel like not only are people often just naturally likely to, to describe their life in that way but one of the things that I that I noticed very regularly when I when I owned a bar and you know would see couples uh, come to my bar on their on their first date and do the whole introduction thing, I would see many individuals come back over and over and over on different dates with different people, and it, it would seem like they took great pleasure in getting their story really like really figured out, really streamlined. So I would I would hear the same auto like autobiography, you know, or I would I would hear the the autobiography of the same person multiple times and it would get better. Like it was like a creative writing course. Like, okay, pretty good. Let's see how you can edit that and, and make it a little more, you know, fine tune it and it would get better and better. But yeah, but I but I noticed the it seemed like people were it seemed like some people anyway were almost like addicted to just having the opportunity to represent represent their life you know and then and keep getting better and better it's as though 
they were feeling the kind of satisfaction of actually improving their life when in fact it you know it they were getting better at describing it right um but but yeah but in some in some ways i think that this card represents that kind of continuous flow that kind of eastern taoist way the path the the thing that you are constantly floating towards not taking you know not even like taking steps towards it because even steps can be kind of atomized it's like left foot right foot left foot you know these are you can count a hundred steps and you know I, I fully acknowledge that pouring pouring water from a container on a microscopic level is still just lots and lots of molecules falling one after another and it could be quantified but I think the reason the analogy works is because none of us experience water that way. We experience water as this continuous, damn it, except for droplets of water. Okay, so yeah, we just got to be clear. It's not, it's not your tap dripping. You know, it's it's that the the metaphor, the visual kind of metaphor, is that continuous outpouring. So that's one. I think that's one aspect of this card. And then the other aspect that I find interesting. Um, again, when, when dealing with the Marseille, why, why is the woman, why is she naked? Is, is her being naked important? She's the first naked character in that whole deck. There's a lot of decks. Certainly a lot of these decks have a lot of nudity, but, um, but in the Marseille, she's the first nude human. There is, you know, there is kind of like a angel cherub cupid kind of character in the in the lover card preceding it but but yeah what is why is she naked uh is it is it important that she's naked i'm guessing so is it important that she's a woman a non-naked man i'm guessing that has something to do with the symbolism but also and then and kind of most weirdly why does it look like her belly button is shaped like a mouth? It kind of looks like, I wish I had the card to pull it up here. Um, why is it shaped? Maybe I can do it. Um, why is it shaped like a mouth? What's that all about? You know? And, um, and my theory is that the, the secondary symbolism the secondary idea to contemplate here is that of the the thing that is creating the flow sorry i'm just browsing my cards here trying to find it the the thing that is pushing that flow that is that is moving it here we go hey look at that so yeah you see she's got this like weird it kind of looks like a mouth right anyways so the way that the way that I, I i see this is that there are things there are things that are counted that are like sequential steps the bricks in the tower and then there are things that just flow and grow in this ceaseless kind of array that's not a good analogy anyways I, I i feel like you know what i'm talking about um and a woman a naked woman with her navel talking to her i feel like this is meant to draw our attention in the direction of her parents you know her belly button used to be the umbilical cord and then also it's you know the those lips are also over you know maybe like her womb and she's naked and a woman and a, maybe a mother maybe this has something to do with that the same way as like your day or your life could be this could be experienced as this singular thread as opposed to a series of events 
the just the life of a bloodline essentially of and, and not just a human bloodline like the the string of life itself could be seen as this singular thing it certainly undergoes changes and there are generations and there are children and parents but it's this you know you could you could focus on you could focus on those atomized parts the parent the child the grandchild whatever or you could look at it as this singular sort of strand and yeah so to, so to me the star is like it's the in the way that those eastern traditions are like the way of the fist or the way of whatever this is like the way of life you know not to not to be too grand here but i think it's i think it's intended to draw our attention one to that kind of f flow flowy nature of things and then and then with specificity around you know being a parent being a child that that whole chain of of reproduction and how that contextualizes a person's life because out of all the things that could act as some sort of metaphorical star that we could set our sights on that we could aim at you know that could be this path for us that we could concentrate as opposed to concentrating on all the individual steps um that kind of that way of life that that path towards that kind of perpetual perpetual life and reproduction through all these different varied stages of individual organisms that are nonetheless sort of tied together um yeah this one also made me think about how how significantly the tarot cards like the marseille deck it really made me kind of think about how heavily it was influenced by different types of spiritual thought and then and then an interesting question arising from that was kind of like if you know if the meaning if the idea behind let's say the star or any of the major arcana are are largely founded in spiritual beliefs spiritual philosophies of that belong to a particular order of spiritual beliefs they're not just you know one card is kind of like christianity one card is kind of like buddhism one card is kind of you know if if there is a, an organizing principle behind the design of all of them it really kind of made me curious how much how much the the ideas intended in the original tarot and i mean that's even a contested term you know it's it's hard to say what is and what isn't the original but uh but i take that to be the the marseille but but yeah but then to ask like okay so how much has how much have the meanings changed how much like this one this this version of the star you know like how how relevant is the the meaning behind that card to the marseille star and on one hand that question could imply that the original meaning has been lost but another interpretation of that question is are the artists that create these variants of those tarot cards potentially unaware of how much of those original ideas they're channeling because that's one of the interesting things about symbolically potent works of art is they're not just things that you look at and think to yourself oh i get it i'm looking at a person doing this thing it symbolizes this and and you quote unquote get it you know really great potent art affects you on a subconscious level and so you know you could you could think you understand it but it's probably affecting you on all sorts of levels that you're not consciously aware of and then and then you think one day you're like i'm gonna make my own tarot deck i have an idea of what kind of card i'm gonna make and it's i'm gonna make a card it's gonna look like this and it's gonna mean this thing it's like 
you know, it's it's interesting to ask how how well an artist can understand their own motivation for what they're doing. And I think some of the greatest artists were the ones that were the most aware of the fact that they had no idea what they were doing, you know? It's like, hey, why'd you paint this this way? What does this mean? They'd be like, I don't know. I'm not a shrink, you know? How, how am I supposed to know? I just, I just make this stuff. It just pours out of me. Um, okay, I'm going to leave things there. I think I could just keep hypothesizing about this, but um, I could just probably go on forever. Anyways, so I, I'll stop here. Hope you enjoyed the video. Maybe give you some interesting ideas. Let me know what you think. Drop me a like if you enjoyed the video. Comment free reading if you would like to be entered into the weekly draw for a free one-on-one reading. And I'll be back tomorrow with another video. Talk to you then. Take care.